Hello, Lisa here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a recent deck roundup and I have a pile of new decks that have come into my collection that I want to share with all of you and chat about. So this is probably gonna be a long one. I have received several decks to share with you guys and also bought several decks myself. So yeah, there's a bunch. First, let's talk about the beautiful care package that was sent to me by the lovely Maria over at Studio Artemy. Oh. My goodness, there are so many beautiful things here and I'm just a little beside myself. So let's go through everything and talk about it a little bit. So she sent me this package and inside there is this I Seize. Let me take this out of its plastic. Is this not the most satisfying thing ever to take something out of its plastic for the first time? So this is a lovely pin that says I Seize. Is my camera not doing me any favors here? I can't tell. I'm at a weird angle and I can't see my, um, what do you call it, my viewfinder very well. Anyway, that is really cute. I'm just gonna set that there. I have an Eda bag where I can put pins like this and this is a coin. So let's take a look at this. I've got little bits of like nail polish on my fingers still from doing my nails. So this one says, okay, hold on. This one says, uh, a decline of fortune is worth a, is worth a cask of wisdom. So that looks like the, that's that side, side there. And then on the back, it says, led by virtue and spirit, accompanied by fortune. So this is a really cool uh, divination coin. Love that. So let's set that aside there. So I will have links to everything, by the way, down below that I'm showing you guys today. This is a sticker for Studio Artemy with the moon phases and some lovely holographic detailing. I have another one of these as above, so below bookmarks and I love it. Um, there's a card here for Studio Artemy. Thank you card. And there is a uh, discount code. So when you purchase from them, I'm assuming you get a card like this. It gives you a discount code on your next purchase. This is a really lovely card stand and it says, Fata Viam Inven Invenient. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Fate will find a way. That's lovely. Let's set that over to the side. I, when I do client readings, I use one of these to um, display, if I use a runic deck or something to pull a big energy, I usually use one of these to display the card. So that'll be cool. Let's put that over to the side. This is the thing that I have to admit I'm super excited about. I've already taken the plastic and such off. So I have done a full walkthrough of the Fortuna tarot deck before. So let's set the books aside for a second. We'll talk about those in a moment. Um, this is the new version of the Fortuna. So the Fortuna previously came in this colorway, which is called Amethyst Aura. And it also, there was also an emerald, like a green version. And when I was sent these decks originally, she sent me both the amethyst and the emerald. Um, these are a really gorgeous uh, pip style, astrologically focused deck. So it's really, really gorgeous. It's got this, like the purple version is really dark and then has this uh, rainbow holographic silver foiling on it. And then these matte purple painted edges, really lovely. I really like the stark contrast on this one. I find it really easy to see the images. Um, but she came out with this colorway. <laughs> Let me just leave this out for a minute. She came out with this colorway and I'm, I was really excited about it because I love me some pastel colors. This one is called Opal Omen. Um, really lovely. As far as I know, you can still get the amethyst one or the emerald one. And now this is this one, which is her newest. Now I think she said this one was going to be limited, but I cannot recall for sure. So definitely check the website. But this colorway is really beautiful. So it's this gorgeous, like sort of creamy, pale, yellowy color. Tons of really good astrological specific information in the guidebook, as well as just wonderful uh, messages, quotes. It's really good. So let's see how this compares. Ooh, it's got these like coral edges. That's gorgeous. And then there's the backings. Now this one is low contrast. Like if you think about these two side by side, like this one's high contrast, this one, Oh, man, can I just tell you though, these decks in general with all this foiling, they just look so beautiful by candlelight. So I'm not sure. I love this. I love the backings. I love the softness of it. But I think having older eyes, I might prefer the higher contrast purple version. Um, but this is really beautiful. So it's all the same imagery. So there's the Ace of Candles. Oh, it's, it's, it's for a pippish deck, it's really intelligent. I love all the glyphs on there. I love the way, the way this catches the light, like by candlelight, I don't even know. I can't duplicate that experience for you on camera without turning all my lights off. But this is a really beautiful version. I love that. But I do think 
I do think that it's easier for me to work with this darker, um, this one's got a silver rainbow holographic. This one's got like a golden rainbow holographic. So it's really going to be about preference. I think because I do so many things on camera, the darker is just makes more sense to me, um, to use, but, oh, this has got that rainbow. I don't know if I can catch it, but the foiling, the gold foiling still has that rainbow effect. It's just beautiful. Anyway, if you're looking for a deck that has that very like esoteric feel, minimalist in a way, but the way the pips are arranged symbolically just make a lot of sense. This is a really, really good option. I have a feeling this is going to end up in a future giveaway. So keep your eyes on the channel. I think I'm gonna keep my purple, my amethyst edition. I was very excited to see this. Um, I love this colorway. I love the backings. That's, that's what I'm a sucker for. Like, look at that. I love the backings. This is so my aesthetic here, but I just really like the high contrast of this Amethyst Edition. So I think this is gonna end up in a future giveaway. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled on the channel for that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So the first book that she sent me is the Oneria Dream Journal. Now this has got a really beautiful, um, almost kind of slightly rubbery textured cover. It feels really luxurious. It's not that like rose petal finish feeling. It's something a little bit different, but it's almost, like I said, almost a little bit rubbery. It's got this gorgeous rainbow holographic foiling on it and on the spine here. And then on the edges of the pages, it actually says Insomnus Veritas, which I feel like I should know in, in, I know Somnus is sleep. Veritas. I'm not, I'm not, I feel like I should know, but, oh, there we go. In dreams, there is truth. So when you open it up, you have these beautiful end papers and it's, you've got a, a plate here, a name plate here, the Oneria dream journal. So you get some introductory information, including some information on dream tracking, planetary symbolism, and then it's this kind of a journal. So you have a, a journal here to note the moon phase, the day of the week, date, time, moon sign, mercury sign, which is interesting, uh, astro notes, um, and then it has some things you can check here, like human, other being, animal, unknown, first person, third person, colors, scenery, symbols, new dream, recurring dream, lucid dream, or unsure. Then a space for you to note any keywords or quick notes, how you felt in your dream, the atmosphere or location, people, animals, or other beings. Then a place for you to sort of narrate or describe the dream. And then a dream analysis. So you get that, I'm assuming it's the same throughout. Yeah, and there is a gorgeous golden ribbon bookmark here. This is really lovely. This is beautiful. I have been very unsuccessful at uh, tracking my dreams with any sort of consistency. I'm not a morning person, and as much as I would love to get up in the morning and write my dreams, that never happens. I get out of the morning, out of bed in the morning at like the last possible moment. <laughs> so that's not gonna happen. So this too will probably end up in a future giveaway. That is gorgeous though. That is gorgeous. Okay, so set that aside. And then the second book she sent, now this one is pretty freaking exciting. So this is the limited edition Clavis Aurea Grimoire, A Keepsake of All Your Secrets. So this is 180 pages, it says alternating lined and blank, thick luxe 120 GSM paper, a vegan leather cover. This cover feels the same as the other, but it's a little smoother than the Dream Journal. So if you have the Dream Journal, this one's a little bit smoother than that. Oh my gosh, look at those end pages. Now this one, this one's staying with me. So beautiful end papers, nameplate again. Oh, this is so pretty. I love this sort of rainbow um, effect that she's done with the artwork on this page. So uh, Clavis Aurea is Latin for literally golden key. And it says noun, the means of discovering hidden or mysterious meanings in texts, particularly applied in theology and alchemy. Love that. So then we get into the actual grimoire which is beautiful, look at this. So this is really wonderful because you can have like quotes, you can decorate one side of the paper and then you can write on the other side. This is actually really, really lovely and I think I'm gonna be able to make really good use of this. I have a few ideas. This also has a bookmark built in. It is a black um, fabric bookmark. There's the end pages at the other end. We also have here, um, Oh, interesting. Mind, body, heart, and spirit. Men's corpus, census, and animus. That's really cool. This is beautiful. And this one also has, um, I don't know if I'll be able to get it to show up in this light, but I feel like there was also some sort of, maybe I made that up, but I thought I had spotted something on the end, on the side pages here, but they are rainbow, uh, rainbow gilded, rainbow golden gilded. That's beautiful. That's staying with me. Yay. Fun. Okay. So set that aside. I've got to make a bit of a giveaway pile and then a keep for now pile for sure. So my keep for now pile. 
Okay, next up, this is already in a bag, and I have shown this already because I, I used this deck or showed this deck in a this or that, but this is a deck I purchased. This is the Pastel Unicorn Tarot. This is by Luna Factory is the company. They've got a bunch of really cute kawaii aesthetic um, decks, and I told myself I wasn't going to buy this because I didn't feel like I needed it. And then, um, and then Kimberly San, uh, Fables Den on Instagram and YouTube, I believe, she made a video about this, about this and other kawaii type decks. And I knew, I knew I wasn't going to be able to watch that video and not want to buy something. And this is the one that sucked me in. So it's super, super stinking cute. Now, oh, by the way, this is a good time in the video to mention, as I'm showing you this deck, these decks, if there is a deck in here or multiple decks in here, you really want me to do a card by card walkthrough of, please drop that in the comments down below and upvote each other's comments. So I know which ones to prioritize for a dedicated video. Um, but anyway, so this comes with a guidebook. The guidebook is in English and Japanese and um, so it is translated. I think this deck didn't used to come with an English translated guidebook or any guidebook if I remember right but um, you get a basic card description for upright and reversed for every card but this is the kind of thing oh my gosh it's so fun so let me just let's just flip through a few cards here so it's got this adorable kawaii aesthetic it's almost sparkly looking but it's a flat matte really nice cardstock that's what the backings look like Look at this High Priestess card. Like, so the symbology is definitely present. Let's go to a suit here. So here we have the Three of Cups. Oh my gosh, the Tea Party aesthetic though. I can't, like the, the Tea Party aesthetic. Oh my God, that's like an afternoon tea tiered tray with the unicorn on top. That is the cutest thing. The entire thing is like tea. It's like going to tea. I just can't, I just can't. This is delightful. Okay, let's take a look. And they have different colored borders. So the cups have this pink border. The swords have this green or mint colored border. So the sword, it's all desserts and stuff. I'm dying, I'm dying. It's so cute. So yeah, this is very much just a, it makes me happy deck. It's definitely not a deck I feel like I need. Still, still, it's so cute. It kind of merges to me what I wanted from the Kawaii Tarot, the, um, the one uh, in the blue box. It kind of reminds me of that, but a little bit less busy and with, uni and with um, unicorns being more of the central focus. Oh my gosh. Look at this three of pentacles. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's so cute. Okay, so anyway, that is the um, Pastel Unicorn Tarot by Luna Factory. They actually have a deck on Kickstarter right now, or at least it, at the time I'm filming, it's on Kickstarter. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but I think it's something about wizards or fairies or, I can't remember. <laughs> but they've got a deck on Kickstarter right now. Nice two piece box, lovely aesthetic quality. That's definitely obviously staying. I bought that. I was also sent the Slavic Legends Tarot by uh, Taroteca Studio. This box is so freaking cool. What a, what, a, what a mood and aesthetic this is. It literally looks like a book on your shelf. Like how gorgeous. Lots of gold detailing. This is beautiful. The box is rose petal finish. This is exciting. I can't wait to peek at this. This is one that I definitely, I don't think I would have purchased for myself, full disclosure. Um, but I was super curious and definitely wanted to check it out and share it with you guys. So again, if you want a full walkthrough, let me know. So they typically send a sample card from another deck. So here it's two-sided. You see their World of Visions Tarot sample justice card on one side and Elemental Wisdom Tarot on the other side. Neither one of these really appealed to me. So um, not necessarily my style. Let's take a look. So this is still a, this is rose petal, but it, it I don't know if you can tell by just me doing this with it, but it's not that thick, clumpy, heavy rose petal. It's, it's more like, it's, <sighs> I don't know how to describe this. It's like a very, very smooth rose petal. So you can tell the cards aren't like sticking. They, they slide really nicely. So it's not that really grippy kind. I mean, yeah, black painted edges. Um, oh, did I show the backs? That's the backs. Love that. And then we have this, their gorgeous style of artwork. I ended up rehoming my Haunted Mansion Tarot, which was the only other deck of theirs I had because I just found that I wasn't reaching for it. There was something about it, the aesthetic that was just, oh, I love this seven of wands. I love how powerful this is. Oh my gosh, it's so fierce. Yeah, this is really cool. This is really beautiful. Their artwork is so detailed, but I think there was something about that Tim Burton-esque style of the Haunted Mansion that I just found myself never reaching for it. But this has a very, it has that very like, mythological vibe. Of course, it's based on Slavic legends, but I don't know Slavic legends. So I would have to take this deck at face value. It does not come with a guidebook uh, in the box. And I believe I asked them about that. And they said that there's going to be or there is a PDF guidebook. I can't remember. 
Um, I, I think this is the kind of deck that I would really like to just work with. Oh my gosh, this is so, the artwork is just, it's incredible. Um, oh my gosh, look at this. Yeah, I would like to, I don't know if I'll check out the guidebook or not. Um, I don't know if it's available or not. If you have more information on that, please let us know in the comments below. Um, but, and also of course, let me know if you want to see me do a full walkthrough of this. I would love to do a walkthrough though, with the, with the intention being taking it at face value. In other words, without knowing anything about Slavic legends, what does the, how does it read? How do, how do I interpret it? Right? Does that make sense? Because I feel like that's the way I would most likely be able to use it. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh, they did such a gorgeous, a good job with this box. So this is to TBD. I don't know if it'll ultimately stay with me or not, but I definitely want to spend some time with it and get to know it first. This next deck was also sent to me by the creator. So this is the power to heal deck. And this is by Chanda Aim. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm so sorry. Chanda or Chanda Aim or Amy. And it's illustrated by Kara Green or Kira Green. The Power to Heal. Affirmation and Inner Child Healing Deck seeks to tap into your inner child and help you heal as you are today. So the deck includes 34 beautiful melanated cards, a coloring book, and activity pack. Um, this is so delightful, this whole set. This is very, very... Um, appealing for inner child work to me. Um, I did a quick look at it when it came in and I'm so excited to show it to you. And I hadn't heard about it at all, at all, at all. And I believe that Chanda's getting ready to do her second edition now. So I don't know if this is not currently in stock, just know that she's working on the second edition. I will have a link to it down below. Um, this guidebook, oh my gosh, this guidebook makes me so happy. It feels, these are, um, I didn't talk about the, this is like rose petal. Look at the rich color. Oh my gosh, it's so appealing. Um, really, really beautiful. Now my box got a little bit beat up in shipping, which is no big deal. Oftentimes cardboard smushes a little. That just is what it is. I'm not worried about that. But let me show you that. Look, let me show you that, like my inner child sees this and is like, this is the best. It's a really good, fun, playful font. And the guidebook is literally, excuse me. Oh my gosh. I celebrate my creativity. I know I'm dope and I celebrate my creativity. Whatever I put my mind to, I will make it happen. I work on my masterpieces daily. There's no, nothing limiting my genius. So the card descriptions are in here, but then the, the artwork is on the page in a coloring book style. Now I will say this paper feels a little smooth, so I'm not sure how it'll take to like crayons, but markers should do. Okay. They may bleed through a little. It's almost, almost that magazine style paper. I feel like a slightly more matte paper would be better for actually coloring, but I think coloring could be really a cool practice in this deck. There are some um, landscape cards in the deck, which is something I'm not really a big fan of, but I love the size of these cards. They feel slightly oversized in the hand. Sorry for the throat clearing. My throat's been a little funny lately. Um, I love these backings because it's very clear that the intention for this deck is to use it for healing inner child. So if you've got childhood trauma, if you've got stuff you're trying to work through, a deck like this can kind of hold your hand and help heal the ouch a little bit, which is really lovely. Um, I do work like that all the time. Um, and so there's things here that I think, are, that I think the messages and the choice of keywords on this card is, on these cards are really, really good. Again, if you want a full walkthrough, let me know, but let me show you some examples. So I awaken my childhood dream. I love this so much. This is, let me zoom in a little bit. So this is, I allow myself to feel, and it shows all these bottled up emotions, good, neutral, bad. This is so relatable to me because I spent a good chunk of my childhood really, really, really bottling. Um, and bottling is still something that I have a struggle not to do um, or do, and then catch, find out I've done it after the fact, which is unfortunate. This is amazing. I am safe. This is exactly the kind of card. Oh gosh, I can't. My strength includes my vulnerability. Yeah, if you want to see a full walk through this, let me know. I continue to meet all my needs. I create and live by my definition. So, so powerful. This is off the cover and it's such a powerful image to have shown for the cover. I know my worth. This is so incredible. I forgive to release all not meant for me. Yes. I trust my healing process. This, 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 this. I reparent my inner child. So important. I own my power. This one, when I was flipping through this, this deck when I first got it in, um, this one just really, really hit hard. I own my power as a survivor. I easily attract great things. Here's one of the landscape ones. I set boundaries with my energies. Oh, or with my energy. That is my only criticism of the deck is I don't like when, when there's some um, landscape cards, but the card stock on this feels really lovely. It's smooth and matte, but not rose petally. Um, cards kind of slide. Oop, I bumped my camera when I was trying to show that. The cards slide pretty decently. They do clump a bit. 
Um, but they don't feel like shuffling them. Actually, let's just shuffle. I haven't shuffled yet. Let's shuffle. Yeah, the shuffle's fine. There's a little bit of a push to push them back together, but it's not rose petal. It's not that kind of clumpy, sticky. This is lovely. This is so pretty. Um, I'm gonna need to find a good bag for this. This is staying. I feel like I could definitely do some really good work with this deck. Where is, and oh, that's the other thing I wanted to say is that I think, let me zoom this out back out again. I think there are some activities in here. Yeah, how to tap into your inner child. Oh, 81 is where the activities are. Hold on. It's at the back. Oh, activity pages. Remember in grade school, we had those dope activity packets to just doodle and have fun? Yep, you guessed right. Throwback. We've included similar activities with adult topics and questions. So there's an ode to self activity, a power to heal inner child spread. Um, my life page, a page on asking yourself questions. Oh my gosh, words to love yourself by, a connect the dot. This is so great. Look at this. This is literally, the way this is created is, is meant to appeal to that inner child. I think this is brilliantly put together and I'm really excited that I'm getting a chance to share it with you. But yeah, this is really, really beautiful. Excited to get to know this better. Siliconway recently sent me her newest deck. This is the Old Gods Tarot. She is the, so I am a big, huge, mega fan of Siliconway's art. I've talked about it a lot. Um, her Shimmering Veil Tarot was my introduction to her work, and it is incredible. And her Devas of Creation and Multidimensional Devas and the Book of the Dead Oracle, like I, I, I'm basically now a collector of everything she does. And she sent me the, her, her newest Old Gods Tarot to share with you guys. Oh my goodness. First of all, this packaging... Her stuff is actually the stuff that I feel, I keep feeling like I want to keep it in the box. I feel like her stuff on a shelf, like lined up side by side would look so good, but I, I do put everything in bags. I'm not, still not a fan of the split, of the split tray situation. Um, it makes me feel like I don't ever know where to split it. It's like almost, it almost makes me anxious. <laughs> like I'm like, I'm not sure how to split my deck that way. Or like, do I need to put it in order first? Does anybody else struggle with that? Like just actually deciding how to split it? It's a problem for me. Anyway, so you have this like slide out section where your guidebook is and Scylla's guidebooks are always really well done with tons of meaty information. So let's see what it says on the back of the box about the old gods tarot. So it says Scylla Conway's latest tarot deck takes us on a journey back in time to the realms of the ancient goddesses and gods. The cards feature multiple deities from around the globe while the minor arcana are pips, their ancient artifacts chosen to reflect elemental energies. This is an 80 card deck with two fools and the 80th card, the wild gods, who, though you may not have heard of them previously, are probably more real than all the others. The face cards also depict multiple deities with a twist. In this deck, the goddess of each suit holds the highest authority within each suit's elemental energies. The gods deal with everyday administration and answers to the goddess in material and spiritual matters. So we're going to have the goddess as like the king, the highest part of the suit. Um, so it'll go god, or excuse me, goddess, then god. Then we have the warrior who protects and defends the element to which he belongs. And, oh, I'm sorry, we have the priestess then who works in tandem with her goddess and goddess. She performs rituals relating to the esoteric pathways of her suit. That makes sense. If you're going to have a hierarchy based on gods, it makes sense to have the goddess, the god, and then a priestess to be that sort of like um, go-between. And then we have, so that's standing in for like the knightly rank. And then the warrior is standing in for the pagely rank and they defend the element to which the, he belongs. That's how I would interpret that. Um, the included 170 page companion book containing full color thumbnails of each card is a somewhat sardonic guide through the myths and legends of the deities, which I am excited about. Also included is a section on sacred geometry and numerology, a list of the deities featured in the deck, a bibliography and citations. So there is a list. Let's just take a quick look. Ah, here is citations. Okay, that's the bibliography. Where's my list? I want a list. Ah, alphabetical list of deities. Wowza, there are a lot. There are a lot. Oh, that's exciting. So yeah, again, if you want me to walk through this one, comment down below, upvote. I'll try to make sure to make some time for at least the most voted for walkthroughs to do dedicated videos. I kind of got to admit this one is exciting. So we have a little paper sleeve. These have this like hexagram shape. I need to get rid of my garbage. There we go. They have this like, no, is that hex? No. What is that? One, two, three. <laughs> Octagon. It's like a stop sign, but it's got long sides, which is really great for having, still having that sort of tarot feel and that shuffle ability. Oh my gosh, look at the backs. These feel like the same card stock as her most recent decks. Um, so it's matte. It's kind of, um, it might be UV coated. It doesn't have that silky feeling or that satiny feeling. It feels true matte. 
like almost papery at the top and the bottom, but it does have some sort of protective coating on it. Okay, so anyway, there's the top. Let's pull out the other half and let's do some flipping, flipping through. Oh, there's some information in the back of the box too. So let's take a look at that. All right, so you can see they are kind of pippish. So we'll take a look at a few examples. I said examples really weird. Examples, I can't speak. Okay, let's take a look here. So it says, you know who I am, don't you? When the world was so fresh, you could stretch out your hands to touch the sky. When you could jump off the cliff and fly, you may have forgotten, but I have not. Through the passage of time, wisdom you thought forgotten is never lost. Dancing among the stars of the boundless heavens, I am here within you and you are here within me. Wherever you go, there I am. Oh, that's lovely. And then you have individual little ribbon, ribbons to lift your cards out. Okay, let's take a look. So here's our fool. This has got an almost, it's painted, but it almost has a collage feel. Maybe it is collage. Y'all, somebody needs to tell me. Like this one's fully painted, but this one feels, wow, this is really cool. Okay, let's zoom in so you guys can see the cards better. Here's our justice card. We have like Isis over here and a dragon over there. And is this deity standing on almost like a stand standing on a pile of bones almost. There's our hermit. Here's the tower, wowza. That's gotta be Kali, right? Maybe not. Let me just see, I, I need to peek. Yo, I this is really cool, okay. Where does it tell us who the deity is? Kali, yep, I was right. Kali for the tower is so on point, that's amazing. Oh, and so the, the, the major arcana have a gold border and then the minor arcana has this silver border. That's really cool. So you can really identify when you're when you're into a, um, a deity card, which is really cool. Okay, the shining fool. So we have our, there's our regular fool. A regular fool and our shining fool. So there's the extra fool. She's done that before. She had two versions of the fool in her shimmering veil tarot. I don't have her other tarots. Oh, I love this. God, is that the Holy Grail? I have to, I just can't. It, it gives that vibe, doesn't it? I mean, maybe it's not, but it definitely gives that vibe. Oh, look at how, she was right about the artifacts. Oh my gosh, okay, this is definitely really exciting, okay. I wanna see the nine. Pips in this case, I feel like they keep you in the world. They're part of the world building, right? Like all these different like artifacts, you literally feel like you're engaging, like you're touring an old temple and finding these different artifacts. Oh, I love the vibe of that. Okay, so then here we have the god, the goddess, the priestess, and the warrior. Which is an interesting order for the cards because I believe the hierarchy is gonna go goddess, and then below that the god, then the priestess, then the warrior, like that. But the way that they were in the deck was a little bit different. Okay, so then we have wands. Oh, look at this, oh my gosh. The crook and the flail, oh, look at this. This is really cool. Okay, so then again, we have a god. Oh, wait, this one's in the right order. This one's in the right order. So yeah, so we have warrior for the page energy. The, oh, and there's scepters for the wands, I just noticed. And then for the pentacles, we have orbs. They're almost like coins. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, they're all coins, oh, I love that, okay. And then, yeah, we're back into the correct order here too. Okay, then we have blades. Oh, this is so freaking cool. I feel like this would be so good for like far back ancestry work or spirit work. This is really cool. This is really cool. Look at this priestess of blades. Wow, this artwork is so intense. And then there's our wild gods card. This is really cool. And I like that the shape, this is probably gonna sound really petty, but I like how the shape is oblong so that you can really, one of the things I have a hard time with with hex and round cards is I want them all to be upright at the end. And because you have the long sides, you can make sure your cards are all upright at the end, which I really like. That's really cool. Oh my gosh, so exciting. So exciting. Okay. Oh boy, here's where we figure out where the halfway point is so I can split the deck. I definitely need to spend some time with these. These are really exciting. Okay. Slide the book back in. Yeah, definitely check that out if that appeals to you. That's really cool. And the thing about Silicon Conway stuff, let me zoom this back out. The thing about Silicon Conway stuff is it's all full of so much depth. There's nothing shallow or superficial about her work, which sounds, I'm not meaning to pick on anybody else's work, but there, if you're looking for something really, really meaty and deep to work with, her decks do not disappoint. 
this next one I purchased myself um, and I'm really, really excited to do some work with this. This is the Into the Lovely Woods deck by Lucy Cavendish. The artwork's by Dan May. Y'all, I have been agonizing and agonizing and agonizing since these two decks, since two Oracle decks by Dan May came out around the same time. There's this one, the uh, one by Blue Angel. And there's also the Gentle Creatures, I think it's called. And I love the backs of the Gentle Creatures because they look like fur. But this is the one that really, really caught my attention. So this says, Blessings and Messages for Times of Solitude and Isolation. Um, venture into the lonely woods and find the greatest gift of all your true self. So it says, Come to the lonely woods when you feel isolated, distanced from loved ones, or wish to embrace quiet, peaceful spaces within a noisy, hurried world. Here you're welcomed with comfort, inspiration, and compassionate guidance. You'll come to know an enriching solitude where you can heal, grow, and journey through your inner wilderness in a beautiful encounter with your untamed, untrammeled, I've never heard that word before, self. This tender and emp empathetic oracle includes 45 cards and a 104-page guidebook. Um, so the guidebook is, text is written by Lucy Cavendish. With hope, kindness, and honest spirit-led guidance, this unique deck acknowledges the struggles of the human spirit and offers a pathway of light through the lonely woods of our lives. So the reason I had decided not to get this initially was because I didn't feel like the lonely concept or the grieving concept made sense, but I've actually been recently really called to do a lot more um, healing work, particularly childhood stuff, healing work, and also sort of grieving the lost child or the lost childhood. And this feels like it really could meet me where I am in that journey. And I really am called to work with it for that purpose. So I was really, before I, before I purchased it, what I did is I went and watched Kelly, Kelly, um, the truth and stories walkthrough of all of these cards. And she did such an incredible job in that walkthrough. I'm going to link it up in the description box or up in the end up in the cards for you but um that was really the reason that I was able to go okay this will be perfect for that kind of work so I am going to be doing some ongoing work with this deck for that purpose and I will definitely report back this is one that I don't think I'll want to do any kind of a full walkthrough with until I've really done that work for a bit and can report back about how it served the function that I purchased it for but I really really um when when Kelly read a few sample messages from the guidebook, I was like, yes, yes, I need this. Um, the, the messages on here make a lot of sense for healing work. So let me show you some examples. So to walk the lonesome road, this one is so gorgeous. To watch over you, it's like a, a guide or somebody, so you're never really alone. Your little island. Love forgives distance. The learning of rights. Find your night self, and there's that sort of barn owl um, or barred owl guidance. Is it barn owl or barred owl? I think it's barred owl. I'm the worst, you guys. <laughs> Time to move on between two worlds. I think this really feels like it's going to highlight and help to navigate the isolated feeling of being in a space of trauma healing. Your presence is a gift to others. The return of the lost selves. Selves. That's interesting that that's plural. That's really cool. The Consolation of Isolation. Honor your holy days. Do not hide your light. I think this is so powerful. And these creatures have this very sort of, how do I describe it? They are very gentle. The, the name Gentle Creatures for the other deck really makes sense because they do have this like, they're not going to startle you. They're going to approach slowly and gently or let you approach them. It's just very meet you where you are kind of vibes into your arms. That's so beautiful. 45 cards is also a really good number. The ending that opens the space for the beginning. Oh, so good. Your inner light will guide you. I mean, really, really beautiful. And as I, as I said, the messages in the guidebook really feel like they, they line up. Let's, in fact, let's pick one here. A time to rest a while. So that's card 19. The whole world is sleeping, and this is when some of your most sacred work is done. In dreams, in the cocoon you create as you separate from the exterior and enter deeply into the divine universe that dwells within you. Enough time has been spent out there. Now it is time to restore and regenerate, to recreate and reweave the inner world, that sanctuary, the memory, palace, and beautiful grove where all true healing takes place. While the world of nature is arresting, you too must return to the deep for this phase of this cycle of life. Soon you will return renewed, re-energized, and transformed. Till then, slumber and dream, sweet child of the blessed planet. I mean, so, so beautiful. Really feels like a handhold kind of deck. Um, so I'm really excited to get to know this. It's on the beautiful um, Blue Angel cardstock that is just so lovely to work with. If you know it, you know it. It's gorgeous. It's matte and silky, not grippy, but beautiful. Love, love, love. So I'm definitely going to be doing some work with this and we'll report back. 
there's just a couple more I want to share with you. The uh, Tarot of the Holy Spectrum. So be prepared to see. There you go. There's my camera. <laughs> it is incredibly shiny. And ultimately, I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about that. But this is the Infinity Edition of the Tarot of the Holy Spectrum. I totally blame this on Marlena, who... Um, introduced me to this and was talking about it on a live stream, I think in one of Dawn Michelle's member live streams. Oh my gosh, it's so shiny, y'all. They give you a cloth. That's how shiny it is so that you can wipe the fingerprints off the cards. I mean, that's a whole thing. It's a lot. It's a lot. And the backs are very reflective. They're literally mirrors. That's crazy. But I'm really digging the colors in this deck. So again, if you want a full walkthrough of anything, let me know. I know I keep saying it, but just, you know, you know how I roll. So I love the neon vibes of this deck. I really in particular love the way that the color runs through every suit. One of the reasons I didn't get the original Holy Spectrum, despite really loving, I love this strength card, despite really loving a lot of the cards is that they had colors that ran through like each suit in a really specific way that I didn't agree with. And so it was really like confusing for me. Um, whereas this way, it, it feels a little bit more arbitrary. So I don't have to hyper fixate on which colors in which card, but I could. Like in particular, I could pull in chakras here. Like with the green, um, I could pull in the heart chakra when talking about the five of swords, which is really interesting. It could be more layers for my reading, right? Um, here, your heart is going through the solar plexus. I don't know. I feel like I could play with it, which could be cool. Um, I don't know if I will or I won't but I have the option, which is neat. There's something about this 10 of swords that I really, really like. Here's the eight of cups. Let's take a look at the nine. Love the nine of cups here at the wishing well, but there's this almost like um, dystopian future kind of vibe to the this deck. There's something about it that feels like it should be a, a, a TV show or a movie. I don't know if that makes any sense or like maybe a comic book. I love this 10 of pentacles. I do think that having these um, cups all lined up throws you a little bit, but each one has a pentacle on it and you've got the big pentacle up here, but that is the 10 of pentacles. Um, wait a minute. Oh, this is the wands. That's an interesting four of wands. It's a great five of wands. Yeah. So I need to spend some time and kind of get to know this one. That's like legit, like kind of a cowboy going on. We got some, some, a knight, a cowboy. And then we have some extra cards in the back with care instructions for the deck, which makes sense. Cause yeah, those backs are a whole thing. I don't know. Could this be something I like <laughs> use for client readings? I don't know. I might not be able to. And that could end up ultimately being a deal breaker cause it's just so freaking shiny, but we'll see. Um, I don't use every single deck for client readings. So it's not like that's the make all, like the end all be all for whether or not a deck's going to work for me, but it certainly does tend to kind of go into my thinking a bit. I think though for putting it away, I'm going to put it away face up. So it's a little over less overwhelming to take out of the box, but that is the Tarot of the Holy Spectrum, the infinity edition. And the last deck that's come in recently that I have to share with you is the Canta G or Canta G. Does anybody know <laughs> how I'm supposed to pronounce this? Does it say on the back? So this is a mass market Oracle. Now I was watching this Oracle get created for a long time. The artwork is by Laura Zuspan and or Zuspan. She's the uh, creator of the I literally had to go get it because I couldn't remember the name of it. The uh, Luminous Void Tarot, which is this very memorable um, oblong deck. Um, and I love, there's something about the quality of this artwork that just does something to me. I told myself I didn't need the Cantagy or can't, I'm going to call it Cantagy until I know. Um, there's something, that I, I, I told myself I wasn't going to get this. I was like, I don't need this. It's round, uh, which is cool. It's 52 card deck and it's nature based. So here's what it says. Um, oh, let, let me not interrupt myself. The reason I wasn't going to get it is because I just, I wasn't sure I would work with it. I Like there was something about it. I was like, I don't know. Is it too specific? Is it too geared specifically towards nature? Because that tends to feel very limiting sometimes to me. I want it to be like expansive keywords, that kind of thing. But then I saw some people talking about it and working with it. And I, I stumbled on it in somebody's favorites video. I can't remember which one. I'm so sorry. And I was like, I... I think I need to check this out. And it's mass market, which is really, it's really a nice um, set for a mass market deck for sure. It's published by North Atlantic Books. And the creator, the, the writer of the deck is Ray Diamond. So the art is by Laura and it's written by Ray Diamond. So anyways, here's what it says. Each of the Cantigui Oracle's 52 beautifully illustrated circular cards serves as a conduit for wisdom, creativity, and spiritual nourishment. Cantigui is the song the earth sings. It's the spell it weaves, the enchantment it whispers, an invitation to deepen into ourselves, come home to our place within the living earth, 
and exist in right relationship with the natural world. Grounded in nature-based archetypes like the self-tending fire, the juniper caduceus, and the voice of the moon, the Kantigi Oracle offers you a space to reattune, reflect, and reconnect to your own inner world, to yearnings and inspirations, and to the earth that sustains us all. And there's just something about the quality of this that felt like it could also be really good for sort of uh, inner work, inner healing. So, and this is always a draw. Yo, when I see people hold up a guidebook that's this chunky, I'm like, ooh, ooh, I really need to spend some time with this. I really need to get to know it. Like this is meaty for sure. The guidebook is 320 pages before you get to the about the creator section. Um... There's a lot here. So for each card, it looks like you get, oh my gosh, there's so much. Okay, so you get a, almost like a narrative style, um, guided meditation style description here. Then you have keynotes, symbology, guidance. So that's more the oracle guidance. So that's like really the, your message. And then you get as an icon, as a portal, a practice, a creative prompt, so two creative prompts, and then an ecological connection. So there's a lot. Wait, is there even more? Oh my gosh, that was a lot. Yeah, there's a lot here. And there's a lot of like suggested activities and ways to work with it. This kind of feels like a, this is gonna, I, I hope this makes sense. This sounds, this feels like a bigger, um, a more extensive version of that uh, wonder walking deck. Like there's just a lot here to sort of bring you into yourself, but also bring you into the world, which I think is really cool. The cards are round and they do have a, I wanna say they're glossy. Yeah, they're glossy. They're glossy. They almost are like, they're like less obnoxiously glossy than some cards, but they, they are glossy. So really nice tray there. And this is what we're looking at. So again, if you want a full walkthrough of anything, let me know. Every star is a doorknob. I love that. But what, what drew me to this since I was watching walkthroughs is that it's got that really like mushy quality that Laura Zuspen's art is like. And then also like licking dew from green leaves. There's something about these phrases, the chasm shrinks as you step across, that I felt like spoke right to my intuition. A charmed leap. So I felt like, oh my gosh, I might be able to actually just work with this right out of the box as an, uh, a really good, op you know what I mean? Like a, like a, like a what? Like a, I can't think of the analogy I was gonna make, but I feel like I could just pull it out and read with it without getting into that chunky, chunky guidebook. So the fact that I can do both, the exploding star, the coiled snake really made me excited. Sometimes when decks have these like phrases, like the self seeing eye, it does, it just falls flat, but there's something, oh my gosh, your ears become a butterfly. This is in, an incredible card. I mean, the ways in which really listening, opening yourself up, receiving allows you to transform in a positive way is wow, 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 wow. Um, I feel like I can really read this and read it without relying on anybody else's perspective, which is really exciting to me. And again, your feet are two fish. Not sure about that one. That one may be one I need to look up. The unburdened bones and it's your pelvis with wings. I just can't. There's so much here. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this one. Excited to get to know it. I want to see what the shuffle is like, but I also kind of don't want to mix up the cards because I think this might be one y'all want to walk through of, or maybe I'm just, maybe I just want to do a walkthrough of it. I don't know. Let me think about that for a bit, but it, it feels, the cardstock feels thin. This is good though, like thin and bendy. It feels good to have a, a round deck with cardstock that's not overly thick or stiff though, because this is larger. This is like a larger deck, right? So having it be flexible means we should have no problem shuffling this like regular riffle shuffle, which is really cool. So anyway, that is the Kantigi Oracle and I'm super stoked to get into that. There's something about the off-center nature of the back that I also really like. Like if you were to put your cards face down, you can kind of see what your directionality is. Let's see how that works. So there's upright. So yeah, upright is when this is kind of up towards the upper right. So if it was like that, you know your card is gonna be reversed. That's so interesting. I don't know why I like that, but I do. Um, so yeah, that is the Kantigi Oracle. Real excited to get to know this. Okay, y'all, thank you so much for hanging out with me while I showed you all the stuff that came in. This stuff came in uh, throughout like sort of the second half of November, all of December, and then into January a little bit. So these have been sort of accumulating for me. I will have another one of these videos next month showing you all the other stuff that comes in between now and then. As you know, a lot of things tend to come in here for either review or consideration or for me to play with or that I purchase and want to work with or whatever. There's lots of reasons that stuff comes in, but I'm very excited about this. Keep an eye out for any upcoming giveaways. I know I hinted that there was a couple that might be showing up, so keep your eyes peeled for those. And for now, that is it from me. Thank you all so, so much. I hope you have a beautiful, magical rest of your day. And as always, may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye.